Welcome back. I, 28 female, disgraced my husband, 35, in his family's presence. I am so unhappy right now. I need to know how to go about pacifying my husband. How do I get him to forgive this slight? I'm so disgusted at myself. Can anyone advise me? During the Christmas holidays, my husband Leonard and I traveled to his home country to stay with his family and attend his dad's 60th birthday anniversary celebration, which his brother was hosting. To save costs on lodging, we stayed in his brother's house, which was very spacious despite having a wife and four kids. We arrived early for the celebration slated for the coming week so Leonard could help with the finishing touches. Other members were expected the next week. Unfortunately, Leonard's father suffered a cardiac arrest the next day and was admitted to the hospital. Medical advice pushed Leonard's brother to postpone the event by another week so their dad could recover fully. Leonard had to return back to our home as he had commitments he wasn't done with regarding the beauty and wellness spa business he was starting for me. He had invested hugely in it and it set him back financially, but he was really happy about fulfilling my desires not to work for anyone. Leonard and I were very happy together. He was so loving and caring, interesting and passionate too. He liked to spoil me, even down to the bedroom. He fulfilled my sexual desires and he accommodated my high sex drive. As a result, we were very intimate and hardly left each other's side. This was the first time we had been apart from each other since we got married a year ago. And even when we started dating two years before that, we were hardly away from each other. So I really missed him. Me and Leonard's brother's wife took turns at the hospital to watch over our father-in-law, but she had her hands full with her kids and work. So sometimes she had her help drop food off and apologetically asked me to cover up for her. I got so bored and lonely. There wasn't much to do except the monotonous routine of hospital home, hospital home. Once, when I was able to get hold of my sister-in-law and chat, I complained and she said it was because I didn't have kids yet. That as soon as they start coming in, I won't be bored. I didn't try to explain that I wasn't bored when I was home with Leonard because she's a traditional and conservative woman. I didn't expect her to understand. Leonard's calls were the only thing keeping me going, but they were short. It was on one of my lonely days that I started speaking with Dr. Anderson. I had been seeing him a lot since he was assigned to my father-in-law, who wasn't stable yet. But we didn't talk to each other since his business was treating my father-in-law. But that day, when he was done, he turned to me and asked if the hospital was as terrible as my countenance made it seem. I smiled and told him yes but I didn't expect much from a hospital anyway. He asked if he was allowed to change my mind, and after the loneliness of the few days, I agreed to have tea and chat at the hospital's cafe. We talked for a long time so that when I returned, I wasn't surprised to meet the house help with some food. Dr. Anderson was around again on my next turn at the hospital. This time, we chatted into the evenings in the hospital room. He left when my co-wife arrived to relieve me. I started looking forward to his visits that I offered to totally cover her turn in mine at the hospital. She was grateful and willingly accepted. Anderson and I started taking walks on some evenings on hospital grounds, and on one of the days, I saw him off to his car. He kissed me, and I kissed him back. But I came to myself quickly and yelled at him before walking away. I hated myself for responding to his kiss, and I decided I was going to ignore him. But the next day, it was a different doctor who came to see my father-in-law. By the second day, I really missed him. I thought of asking the nurses for his contact, but I decided to ask my brother-in-law instead, since he usually followed up with the doctor on his dad's health. I cooked up a reason relating to information about my father-in-law's feeding, and he obliged. I called Anderson and asked him why he just ghosted. He chuckled and said he was at the hospital, but he was just no longer seeing my dad-in-law. He directed me to his consultation room when I asked where he was. When I got there, he started to apologize about the kiss, and he told me, I was a very attractive woman and he liked me, but he respected my marriage and he was in a serious relationship too. I don't know what came over me, whether it was his compliment or confession that pushed me to start kissing him. I couldn't help myself. I was horny and I hadn't had sex in a week. I realized I was attracted to him too. We had sex on his table. He was very apologetic afterwards, but the sex felt so good, and I wanted more. 
Still, I told him that we could stay friends and nothing more. He agreed. The next night that he was in, I went to meet him again. We were fooling ourselves with the friendship because we had sex again on the consulting bed. While we were at it, my phone kept ringing, but I didn't want Anderson to stop. When I climaxed, I asked him to hold on while I picked up the call. It was my brother-in-law asking if I was alright because he arrived at the hospital and he couldn't find me. I jumped up, adjusted my clothes, and hurried out. I met my brother-in-law coming out of the room with a worried expression that changed to questioning when he saw me. Then he looked over me, and I turned back to see Anderson. He must have been worried at the way I panicked. That's why he followed. But the problem was, my red lipstick color was the same as the stain on Anderson's temple. I prayed with everything in me that my brother-in-law didn't notice. Then I turned and apologized that I needed to ask the doctor a question about my father-in-law's feeding time since he had been stabilized. My brother-in-law paused and then told me my hair was disheveled. I was so embarrassed and worried that he suspected something, but he didn't give anything away. He told me to go home that he was staying over with his dad. At noon the next day, Leonard arrived at the house. I screamed in surprise and went to hug him, but he stiffened. I don't know if it was real or that the guilt from sleeping with Anderson made me feel that way. I asked him why he didn't inform me that he was coming back, that I could have him come pick him up from the airport. He asked if I wanted him to tell me so I could plan my secret rendezvous with the doctor before he arrived. I was stunned and tried to speak, but no words came. He looked at me and said that he hoped I would flare up at the weighty accusation he had just made. He said the fact that his words didn't anger me made them true. He said he would deal with me when he got back, that he had to meet his brother at the hospital. I was so stunned that I couldn't say a word. When I came to, I went after him shouting on top of my voice that he was mistaken and it was all a lie. But he was already driving out in one of his brother's cars. I'm mortified. How did he find out? How do I weave this in my favor? Do I deny the doctor totally, or should I tell him the doctor came on to me? I need help. Update. Leonard got back and called me into the room we shared. He said he had gotten wind of my promiscuity with the doctor as soon as it started. He said I forgot this was his birth country, and that was his family hospital. His late mom had worked there until she died, so he knew people. I started crying. He said he didn't realize that under two weeks was too much for me, a married woman, to control herself. He said there were no sexual preferences of mine that he didn't attend to. And yet, I was acting like a sex-starved woman. He said he wasn't just disappointed, he was disgusted and couldn't stand my presence. I knelt and started clutching at his knee, but he shook me off. He said our marriage was a sham. He said I belonged to the streets, not in a marriage, that he didn't want a part in it anymore. He said I had to find a new home straight from his brother's house and that I was no longer welcome with his family. He added that the last thing he would do for me was to ship my possessions to my new address. I was crying loudly and begging him, but he asked me to leave his presence. It was just a moment of weakness. My high sex drive got the better of me. This is the first time that I've been unfaithful. I should have been more careful with Anderson. However, I didn't know I was being spied on at the hospital. Was it one of the nurses? I regret even starting anything in the first place. I need advice on how to go about this. Should I enlist his father's or brother's help? Edit. I finally got to talk to Leonard's brother and his wife after I moved into a guest house. I found out he was the one who told Leonard of his suspicions and not any nurse or spies. I should have known since Leonard returned a day after his brother saw me and Anderson at the hospital. He said he wasn't very sure then, but my actions were questionable because Dr. Anderson no longer treated his father at that point. And he realized after backdating that Anderson wasn't even treating his dad when I requested his contact. He told me that his wife also confirmed it when he discussed it with her on the phone that night before calling Leonard. She said that she met Anderson in the hospital room with me in his off-duty clothes, but had thought nothing of it until her husband spoke of the compromising situation he found us in. He said it was my admittance that made them sure I had cheated. I pleaded, explaining that it was a mistake that occurred in a harmless friendship. I asked if they could just set up a meeting with Leonard for me. My brother-in-law said that I disgraced Leonard and his family, that they wanted to hear me out for old time's sake, and the divorce papers will be served as soon as Leonard returned home, found a manager to run the spa and was settled, therefore there was no point reaching out to Leonard. My heart is aching. 
My whole world is crumbling before me. How do I get my husband back? 